Welcome back to the How to Finesse podcast. I am your host, The Jackal, aka The Finesse Father. This is episode three. Yes, we made it this far. Can you believe it? We have upgraded once again. As you can see, I got a new microphone here for that crisp, clear audio for all you podcast listeners out there. New light. Oh, got the headphones. It's official. Backdrop coming next. So we're going to jump right in. And of course, the title of this podcast is How I Finesse Jay-Z and Beyonce. So I'm sure you guys want to hear all about that. So I'm in New York. I'm working at a bunch of restaurants. I'm waiting tables here and there. I'm making good money, but it's still a little bit tied down. I have to clock in every day. I got to be there at a certain time. Uh, You know, I got to be there late. Uh, So it was kind of like constraining when it came to like a job. So I found something different. I found uh, something called Model Bartenders. So basically it was like a catering company. Uh, They paid you a pretty good uh, hourly wage. And then uh, you had to be a model, so you had to be good looking. And then, uh, yeah, you got sent out on really exclusive gigs and got to see some official parts of New York. Got hired there, started getting off onto some gigs immediately. One of the very first gigs I've ever had with this company was actually a holiday party for this company called IAC. It's owned by this billionaire named Barry Diller. He's a billionaire. Uh, he's the husband of Diane von Furstenberg, a huge fashion designer. Anyway, this guy's a billionaire. He does a holiday party every year at his headquarters. I mean, I'm going to throw up some pictures here of the headquarters. So I'm working this event. And you know what, before I even go to this event, I'm going to read you a little bit of an article from the uh, New York Magazine, actually. This was posted on December 17th, 2010. So for all you haters out there who said that this might not have happened, I'm going to give you some receipts already before I tell the story. <laughs> I'm actually going to be reading while I show you the visuals at the same time. So by New York Magazine, the headlining is, John Mayer is available for parties, photo booths, and I quote, The photo displayed here are from the photo booth at the IAC holiday party last night at the sleek IAC building. For some reason, John Mayer was there, and apparently he served as the deadpan backdrop for many a guest's portraits. After all, who wouldn't want a picture of himself making out with his girlfriend in front of the guy who called Jessica Simpson sexual in the palm? I don't know what that means. They let you use shit like that for your New York Times wedding photo nowadays. Mayer was much more charitable with the Daily Beasties and the techies from Barry Diller's various other companies than another celebrity guest at the party, though. DJ Samantha Ronson apparently got up with the youngsters and their revelry. At one point, she grouchily tweeted, Nothing pleases me more than a hipster requesting a song I've already played. (laughs) One, I'm in the loop. Two, you have no idea what you're asking for. Hear that, people? She's in looping. It's sort of like what the beast Tina's Brown says about buzzing, except with noise-canceling headphones and a scowl. So this is the uh, party that they're actually talking about. So, catering gig. Exclusive events all the time. I get invited to work this gig. My job that day was to work the guest list. Me and about two other people were at the front door checking everybody in to make sure they were good to go. So we had a list of like regular people and then we had like a VIP list, but there were so many names that it was almost impossible to keep up with who was who. I'm working the door, I'm checking off the names, some celebrities are popping up here and there. Some people that are pretty cool, nobody like super, super exclusive, but the party was dope, the venue was amazing. I mean, I was so into the, the list that I was mostly looking down the clipboard like this. So I would ask the people their name, hey, how you doing, what's your name? And they would tell me the name. So I look at this guest and I look back down at my clipboard, I'm like, hey, how you doing, sir, what's your name? He goes, uh, Mayor. I'm like, okay, Mayor. I look at Mayor, Mayor, Mayor. And your first name, sir? Mayor, Mayor. John, John. John, John Mayer, John Mayer, John Mayer. Oh, hey, hey, John Mayer, how's it going? Hey, yeah, come on in, what are you drinking? You want something to drink? All right, let's go. Finesse factor. Finesse factor. Be able to switch up at any moment. I could have been like uh, awkward or my bad, I didn't recognize you or something like that, but I just went with the flow. I switched up, immediately became ultimate host, asked him if he wanted something to drink. He appreciated that and I even got a picture with him. If you don't believe it, I'm gonna throw it up right here. Bam. Yes, John Mayer and me are best friends now. So I finesse, I finesse my photo with John Mayer. That's a finesse factor. Don't be afraid to ask for a photo either. If you had a party, even if you are working, I mean, screw it. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Take that photo. So it gets even better. We finished working. The gig was really easy. All I had to do was check some people in. Just guess what, guys? So after we finished working, people who were throwing the event come up to us and they're like, hey, the host uh, really liked you guys. He said that if you wanted to, you could stay and party with us, no problem. And I'm like, what? We could stay and party here? I'm in, let's do it. So of course, I clock out, 
I had my same gear on, all black attire, and I'm just like going ham. I'm going to the party. It was open bar. It was like a bunch of celebs. Um, I was having a blast, but of course, I didn't just want to be partying with the regular people. So you know, I had to you know finesse. Finesse my way into a pretty cool situation. As you could tell from the event, somebody who was DJing was somebody kind of famous actually, it's Samantha Ronson, it's Mark Ronson's sister. She's a really famous DJ and she actually used to date Lindsay Lohan. So I think that's what she's probably most known for. They had a really cool, tumultuous, rocky relationship. Anyway, I recognized her. I knew she was a DJ and even though I wasn't working, I was still kind of like in host mode. So I was what? Brave and bold. Always remember that, be brave and bold. I went up to her. And I asked her just straight up, like, hey, what are you drinking? And she's like, um... Jack Daniels. Be right back. So I go to the bar. I'm like, hey, I'm trying to use my work authority. Like, I still work there. Like, so I'm like, hey, a VIP really needs a drink. She needs some Jack Daniels. It's actually Sam Ronson. She's the DJ. I need Jack Daniels now. And they're like, we ran out of all the Jack Daniels. And I'm like... What, what am I gonna do? Like I got I just already told I was gonna get a Jack Daniels. Now I'm gonna look like I'm not a man of my word, which is another finesse factor. Finesse factor. You never want to pump fake. So you never want to promise something that you can't deliver. One of my favorite models is to underpromise and over deliver. That way you don't have to held accountable for all this stuff you told me you were gonna do, and then you can actually only do a little bit. At this point, I'm like, well, I gotta live up to this. I can't pump fake on Samantha Ronson. She's the whole DJ of the party. She's probably waiting on this drink. Uh, I'm like, you know what? Well, you don't got Jack Daniels. What is that, whiskey or something? Just give me like uh, some Jim Beam or something. I don't know, she won't tell the difference. So they're like, okay, here's some Jim Beam. They pour me some Jim Beam, boom, take the cup, take it over to Sam Ronson. Give it to him, like, here's your jack. She's like, thanks. Takes a sip. She goes, That's not Jack. And I'm like, No, it's uh, Jim Beam. Is that okay? And she's like, I only drink Jack. And she puts it back down. I'm like, Oh, fuck. there goes my chance of being cool with her. Like, I thought I was going to be at the DJ booth all night, but apparently not. You know what? But I didn't give up. I went further. I kept going, which is another finesse factor. Finesse factor. Persistence is key. Never accept no as an answer. No just means not right now. I go back to the bar. I'm like, hey, I just gave her Jim Beam. She's really upset. She doesn't want anything but Jack Daniels. You guys have to have some back here. They're like, yeah, we have Jack Daniels, but it's only like full bottles that we have. Like we can't, we can't open anymore because you know we're about to close. And I'm like, well, this is the VIP. Just give me a whole bottle. And they're like, oh, okay. And they give me a whole bottle of Jack Daniels. So now I go back to the DJ booth to Sam Ronson, and I'm like, here you go. <laughs> and she looks at the bottle, she's like, ah, oh, okay. And then the whole night, no lie, I was in the DJ booth partying with her, the only person in there, in the whole party, there must have been like a thousand people there. And I was the only person in the DJ booth chilling with her, I got a picture with her, I'm actually gonna throw the picture up right there. Bam, bam, bam. Yes, I got a picture with her. And yeah, she was super cool. Always get those pictures, man, especially if you have already been of service to somebody, then you can really ask for something and they'll feel guilty if they don't give it to you. And also another finesse factor. A finesse factor. I didn't go up to the DJ booth and ask her, hey, can you play this song? Or hey, you're Lindsay Lohan's ex, or can I get a picture? The way I finessed it, I offered her something immediately when I first met her to show her, hey, I'm a friend, I don't need anything from you, I just want to give you something because I think you're cool. And that goes a long way. So always be of service, always give first. You'll be more likely to get what you want. All right, here goes the highlight of this podcast here. The finesse factors level 5,000 on this right here. This is probably one of the most memorable nights of my life, even though I got a little bit tipsy and I remember about half of it. The part I do remember was unforgettable. So the same company I'm working at, this model bartending company, they get me a bunch of exclusive events. There's a bunch of other catering parties I probably won't even name because they don't match up to this next one I'm about to tell you about because this is actually crazy. I get an email probably like the day before the actual event and the, the guy's like, hey, uh, we got a really exclusive event. We want you to work tomorrow. Are you available? I'm like, yep, absolutely. Go ahead and confirm me. It's 6 p.m. to da-da-da, be there, shaving, all black, blah, 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 whatever. I'm there. I'm actually gonna throw the email up here while I'm talking so you can see it and know that I'm not fronting. So they didn't tell me much about the event. They just said it was a high profile event and that it was at Rockefeller Center. And I'm like, okay, cool, that's pretty dope. I get to Rockefeller Center, check in with the people at the party, they start assigning people their different roles of the night. So I guess I was one of the last people added to the event because I just found out about the day before. 
and one of the roles that they assigned me was to be downstairs outside the party at the coat check downstairs. So I went down there at first and I was like, man, this is kind of whack. Like, why well, I got to be downstairs at the coat check? Ain't not, I mean, this is going to be an exclusive party. I'm going to be up there with everybody else. Plus, I'm looking at my phone. I don't have any service. I'm like, okay, this is just not going to work. I go back upstairs. When I go back upstairs, I see them explaining about what the party is going to be. Apparently, this is Steve Stout's 40th birthday party. So if you don't know who Steve Stout is, I'll throw a picture of him up there. It's basically Jay-Z's business partner, one of the founders of Rockefeller Records. Super VIP, huge music mogul. I mean, like the guy. Marketing genius. It was his 40th birthday party. When I tell you I found that out, I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be crazy. I'm like... Okay, no, I can't be downstairs in this coat check area because I'm going to miss out on all this action. I know there's going to be some VIPs up in here. So what do I do? Well, I feel a little guilty now, but hey, this is another finesse factor. Finesse factor. Don't always accept what they give you. And there's always other options. So I was assigned to be down in the coat check, but I knew that I would be better upstairs with the celebrities. So what I said was, and it was kind of true and not kind of true, but this is definitely a finesse factor. I said, hey, you know what? I'm really expecting an important call and there's no service downstairs. Um, I'd rather be upstairs where I can ex get this call at any moment. That's all I had to say. And the person who was doing the scheduling or whatever was like, okay, well, no problem. We'll just switch you with so-and-so. So so-and-so -so go downstairs. I'm upstairs in the party now. Finessed. Finessed. <laughs> now, it gets even better. So there was about 30 servers and about 30 guests. I mean, this was super exclusive. It was Steve Stout, one of the founders of Rockefeller, and every guest had their own server, had their own waiter. And they started handing us pieces of paper, which each celebrity who each server had. I get my paper, it says LeBron James on it. This is crazy. I'm gonna be serving LeBron James all night? Okay, let's get it. Other people had like Nas, somebody had Mary J. Blige, Somebody had Gail, you know, Oprah's little gal pal, Solange. Um, the whole talk of the night was like, dang, I wonder if Jay-Z and Beyonce are gonna be here. And it's like, you know, Steve Stout is, his, is like his homeboy, one of the founders, like they gotta show up in my head. I'm like, yeah, they're gonna be here. So sure enough, you know, there's dinner going. We go out to the table. I'm gonna show you some actual pictures of the rooftop. It was at this place called uh, 620 Loft and Garden on the Rockefeller Plaza. And uh, actually, I'll jump right into another receipt for all you haters out there who thought that this might not have happened. I don't have any pictures from this, but I got the uh, article from the New York Daily News posted on June 27, 2010. Once again, I'm going to roll the article up here so you can read along with me. So the New York Daily News, June 27, 2010. The headline is, New Jersey Nets minority owner Jay-Z wines and dines free agent LeBron James in New York. And I quote, James made a surprise appearance at the 40th birthday party for Brandon guru Steve Stout that took place Friday night at a magnificent 7th floor roof garden at Rockefeller Center. In addition to being a close friend of Jay-Z, Stout is the founder of Translations, the marketing firm that has put James together with McDonald's and other deep-pocketed corporate sponsors. At the party, LeBron, who's no stranger to VIP treatment, got the full Jay-Z family experience. He arrived with the rapper and his wife, Beyonce, Mary J. Blige was also on hand. He ate a meal catered by Chef April Bloomfield and the staff of the Spotted Pig, which counts Jay-Z as an investor. Dishes included beef and Stilton pie, an Arctic char, at two, and at 2 a.m., breakfast with something called steak and egg biscuits was served. And, who, and helping the crowd work off all those calorie, calories was Beyonce's sister, Solange Knowles, who would play DJ for the evening. Now that's not me, that's the New, New York Daily News, and I was there. The first finesse was me finessing my way out of the coat check. Uh, the second finesse was just me being in the event and just enjoying that moment and just getting to experience that because these are once in a lifetime opportunities. Like when you're in the room with like some of your favorite people in the world, you gotta soak that up and take advantage. And like, if you really want it, you have to go and get it. Like if you want it, you're gonna get it. So one of my uh, favorite moments was when I actually saw Jay-Z walk in. And of course he walked in and, and it wasn't like just a regular, I'm just gonna walk in and nobody's gonna see me. He walked in with Nas 
and he had a big suit on and some sunglasses and there was a bunch of cameras flashing. He was like laughing with Nas. He was like, yo, chill, son. Yo, the cameras is on. Yo, the cameras is on. I was like, oh my God, he's right there. Definitely would not want to approach him at that moment at all because he just gives off his energy as like, you know, I might shoot you. <laughs> I just kept my cool. And then of course, you know, I wasn't like amazed, amazed. I mean, Beyonce was dope back then. She was in the party. She showed up somehow, just slid in there out of nowhere. I remember there was one moment where it looked as if there was nobody else that was paying her any attention like she literally was just sitting there like this and was like hmm I wish somebody would come talk to me so then I was like okay here I go so I had an excuse though I didn't just go over there and say hey how you doing I had a glass of uh, champagne on a tray and I went over to her and I said hey would you like a drink and she was like no I'm okay and I said um, I just want to let you know you're my favorite person right now and she's like this tall she's like Really? I am? Like all like naive, like she didn't know she was like the queen of the world. And then I just walked away and that was it. And I talked to Beyonce that night and I'll never forget that. <laughs> Shout out to B and Hove. I'll see you guys soon at the top, very soon. Yeah, the whole night was great. I mean, it was like a dream come true for any hip hop fan. I mean, Mary J. Blige was on the microphone singing happy birthday with Nas. I mean, everybody was tipsy. Mary was tipsy. I had to walk Gail, Oprah's friend, to the uh, bathroom. She was holding a dress the whole time. Just billions of dollars and black excellence everywhere. I was just in the right place and I knew that I was gonna be here soon in a different role. Uh, and, and uh, pretty soon I will be. You know, I'm working the event, it, it gets up to like 2 a.m. in the morning. Now when you're working these events and these catering jobs, after, after a certain point, like all the captains and the people who are in charge start going home. So it's really just left with like a few people to hold down the, the, the lingerers that are still there. And I was one of them. And I would just disappear. Like I would go check out the view. I would go enjoy myself. I might, you know, like sip a little bottle of Ace of Spades. Um, they had a cigar bar there. So I remember asking the lady who was working the, the Cubans or whatever. I was like, yo, let me get one of them cigars. She's like, okay, which one do you want? I was like, I wanted the one that Jay-Z had. And she's like, okay, it's this one. So boom, got the cigar, got the ace of spades. I'm sitting here with somebody's assistant. I don't remember who it was, but shout out to you, whoever you were, you had dreads and you were sharing the wine with me and stuff, chilling on the rooftop, it's supposed to be working. Everybody else, is in the <laughs> Everybody else is the inside working. I'm on the outside, not giving up. <laughs> what might happen to me, just enjoying the moment, Rockefeller Center, once in a lifetime opportunity. So that is how I finessed my way into Jay-Z and Beyonce's party. Yes, yeah, so that is how I finesse my way into Jay-Z and Beyonce's party. There's a bunch of finesse factors. Finesse factors. Here. The biggest one was always being brave and bold, never accepting what people assign to you, and know that there's always more options. Rich people love options. And always be of service. Like, if you're gonna ask for something, I know it sounds like manipulative, but give something first because just out of giving, people will see you as a friend and they'll be more likely to do stuff for you. So until next time, I appreciate all you finessers out there. Drop your favorite part of this podcast below. I'll shout you out next week. See you then.